a very uh, few uh, quick opening remarks from me before we start. Uh, the webinar is part of a series of webinars put together by the Center for Global Workforce Management at SFU in Canada, the Center for International Human Resource Studies at Penn State in the U.S. Our colleagues there, Elaine Farndale, Maya Vidovich, and Miguel Olivas, an ESCP business school in Europe, and I'm of course well aware that Europe is not a country, but ESCP has six campuses in six European countries, which makes that an app reference. Our two presenters are from two of the campuses, Berlin and Paris. We're also supported by colleagues at SFU, Dana Higgins and Edna Kwan. Today's session is being recorded and we will share the recording by various channels so that uh, it can be viewed by those who could not join us today because of a time zone or other commitments. Um, our webinar series was initially uh, motivated by frustration of all the conferences and research meetings that got canceled this summer and our desire to provide a forum for our HRM community to get together. But as we got the series underway, that frustration was replaced by enthusiasm. So we had one session at the end of June uh, and now we're getting the fall talk started. In addition to today's webinar, there are two more planned for now, one in mid-October and one in November, so keep your eye out on all of the various channels through which we communicate. Uh, and these were the opening remarks. Now we move on to the main event. Uh, the title of today's talk is The Cultural Content of IHRM, Recent Development of Experiences from Digital in Teaching Innovations. And it's my pleasure to introduce our speakers, Dr. Marion Festing and Dr. Maral murad -Bekova. Uh, Marion is a professor of HRM and intercultural leadership at ESC uh, in Berlin. Her current research activities combined her interest in international HRM and talent management uh, in various institutional and cultural contexts with diversity and inclusion. Marion's publications include articles and journals such as Human Resource Management, Journal of World Business, and Academy of Management Perspectives. Uh, her colleague, Morel Morad Bekova Turan, uh, is also a professor of human resource management at ESCP Business School Paris. Uh, she has rich educational and work experience from Kazakhstan, Russia, and France. Um, Morel's current research interests focus on intersection of HRM and organizational behavior, again with attention to institutional and cultural context. And her work, too, has appeared in HRM, International Journal of HRM, the European Management Journal, and Management International Review among others. And I think that's plenty from me. So I pass on uh, the mic to Morel. And you're muted, Morel. Sorry, yeah. Thank you, Mila, for this nice introduction and uh, welcome from Paris. Um, and I'm very, very glad today that Marion is presenting this serious game now to the international HR community. At our school, ECP Business um, School, uh, which, uh, as Mila said, located in six campuses, uh, Paris, Berlin, Madrid, Torino, London, and Warsaw. We were very, very excited that Marion developed such an interesting and modern tool that was welcomed by the students so well. So Marion, you won many awards for this at the national German and international levels, including our school's innovative teaching award. So um, Marion, why did you have an idea of developing a game on intercultural issues of international HR? Okay, first of all, thank you very much, Mila, for the nice introduction, Maral, for all these very nice words. I don't know how I, how I can meet the expectations, but I will try. So yes, uh, some years ago in 2016, we started uh, thinking about how can we uh, explain culture in a good way to our students without sophistication, without stereotyping, which very often happens happens when you only talk about national culture, uh, but do not go deeper. And so a long process has started. And well, why did we start to think about intercultural management? We started to think about it uh, because in a way it's in the DNA of our school. You told us that we have these six campuses and the students are not allowed to just stay at one campus. And uh, even now with COVID-19, they have to move campuses sometimes online, sometimes even in presence. So we opened all our campuses again. So uh, intercultural education for sure is at the heart of our school. Uh, but this was only the first moment, the initiative. And uh, then we said, well, intercultural competence is something which every international manager has to possess. So how can we really develop that? This was the idea. And uh, then we looked at what many people 
do. They talk about national uh, differences and Maral and I, we were discussing, well, am I a typical German? Maral, what are you? Am I national, right? So are you French? Are you Kazakh? What are you? So uh, how can we come closer to that and explaining intercultural management? So we said, well, there must be other concepts out there. We were aware of that. And uh, so we included a lot of new concepts of intercultural management, of cultural understanding from psychology, from sociology, things like polyculturalism, public culture, private culture, and uh, we designed a whole new world of culture with our course. Okay, thank you, Marion. So could you tell us more about the game to get the idea of developing a serious game and how does it work? Yeah, so uh, the serious game was an idea which came up together in my working group and uh, I have a PhD student who is Tobias Schumacher and he's an engineer so of course he has a high affinity to um, let's say technical issues and so we were discussing and we were thinking well the serious game can really be a very good alternative to teach intercultural management but also intercultural issues in international human resource management. Uh, why? Uh, on the one side culture is complex, I just said that. So it's not only national culture it's organization culture, it's group culture, it's all its norms, its values. So there are a lot of new uh, concepts for culture. So we could map that through the serious game. And then the second point was uh, in terms of teaching. Uh, you know that we learn about cultural competence through cultural exposure. So being in another country, such as students or expatriates. So we learn a lot about culture. And the other way of teaching is classroom teaching. And uh, these are two completely ways of learning. And the serious game offers the opportunity to introduce a kind of real life experience in our courses. So we could also always do classroom teaching and in a very interesting way and we know that it's very effective but adding this real life experience with a serious game was something new and so we said well why not trying that uh, by the way we are the not not the first ones to develop a serious game on intercultural management but those we looked at are quite old and as we all know technology has advanced and uh, they do not really have an encompassing view of culture when uh, they are used for teaching so third point, uh, why a serious game? Well, it's timely because uh, students want to learn at their own pace. This is what we saw. They want to learn when and wherever they can, but not when we decide to have course, right? So at least partly. And then we said, okay, the serious game could be a solution to that, right? It could be a solution to the trend of individualization in teaching and learning in our society. So why not try? it. So these were some of the ideas we had in mind when we embarked on this adventurous journey. Yeah, that, that's exactly. So uh, could you guys give us some, you know, tangible impressions of this series game so that we can see what is this actually? <laughs> yes, I can. And I would like to share with you a video uh, which shows, gives some impressions about uh, how um, the serious game works and you will see that uh, the serious game is something quite big so it's six hours of uh, teaching and these six hours sorry um, So I have, uh, someone tells me that you cannot hear me, is that right? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Maria. Okay, very good. Uh, then I would like to start this year's game film, but before I wanted to tell you uh, how big the adventure is of developing such a serious game, because on the one side you need the technical knowledge, so we, we had help from a technical company from Vazaz, on the other side you need a lot of academic knowledge, you need to have knowledge about the countries you are talking about, like we were talking about China, about Russia, so we had a lot of colleagues uh, who helped us with that, and of course, as I said, uh, Tobias, my PhD student, and the 
the whole team were involved. So it was a really big adventure uh, to design this game. And now I would like to start it, the film. Moving tomorrow. Today is the day. Step into the shoes of Lucy and accompany her on an adventure which leads her to the different international locations of the company Runergy. Get to know your new work environment and make decisions that ultimately affect how the story pans out. But be prepared, there is something going on at Runergy that endangers not only Lucy's career but the whole company itself. I'm really happy to see you this optimistic again. I really am. It's been a while and I think you're gonna rock at Ronergy. But I hope that you didn't forget our little people. While Lucy's life and the narrative of the game evolve, you'll unlock insights which will help you make sense of your experiences and to learn more about culture and intercultural management. You have to study and revise by completing puzzles and making conversation with other characters. By steering Lucy, you will train your business and intercultural skills, not only in the game, but also in real life. Get to know the latest insights from management science, psychology and sociology to understand the intricacies of intercultural management, national organizational and group culture, cultural diversity, cognitive biases, global leadership and much more, all based on scientific knowledge. Develop your intercultural skills with Moving Tomorrow by experiencing the story of Lucy and Ranaji. Okay, uh, so you got an impression about the serious game. Um, yeah, looks very, very innovative, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so what do we, do we need to know about creating such a game? Yeah, that's not so easy and uh, I will just share my presentation with you because I prepared a little bit uh, for that. Just uh, wait. Okay, so what did we do? Uh, uh, we followed a little bit uh, the design science and we developed a mimicry series game design module. What does that mean? Uh, I will explain you step by step. So first, uh, you need to define what is the learning objective of this serious game and we said well we want to develop intercultural competence of our learners and uh, we said uh, there is one concept which is very well known which is cultural intelligence so we use the concept of cultural intelligence to map what for us is cultural competence and then we asked our students to apply CQ as cultural intelligence is named uh, in various international work settings. So this was the idea, developing intercultural competence. And uh, for that we used, as I said before, insights from intercultural research and from international human resource management research. Uh, in addition to that, as a a learning tool, uh, we were looking at different ways of learning, so different learning pathways, which is cultural exposure, as I said before, like an expatriate, or formal instruction in classroom. And we were looking at what are the specific features of this different uh, learning pathways. And here we used insights from experiential learning theory. So we looked at the learning modes, we looked at the learning types and tried to integrate all of this knowledge into our serious game. And as we know, both, both are related, right? The ways uh, how you learn and the learn objective and so far what research tells us uh, the results are very mixed so cultural exposure 
can lead in some studies to uh, culture intelligence, to all dimensions of culture intelligence, but other studies are not that positive. The same for formal instruction. So we said maybe the combination in a serious game can help here. And uh, then we designed the game mechanics and uh, the whole game which means we really had to develop the story. I will talk about this a little bit later. And here we uh, used insights from ICT, so from design science. And we said, well, uh, on the one side, this is what design science said, says a serious game has to be useful. So you have to reach the learning goal, the culture intelligence. On the other side, uh, you have to keep the learners engaged. So this is what we call the usability, right? So the enjoyment of playing the game and the attention that you're immersed in the story. So this was our starting point and this was the really complex field of information we had when we started. And then uh, we designed the game and the game is uh, six episodes for the first uh, game and then we did another game which is two episodes and you already saw that in the film so it's about Lucy and just imagine all the small decisions you have to take so how does Lucy look like right is she, uh, is she a white person is the main character a lady or is it a colored person so we decided for Lucy with the black hair and uh, she started her journey in a Berlin startup, startup company and we wanted to map that and a very modern way. So we said we want to have a sustainable company. Ranergy is producing shoes which are producing energy when you walk. So this is the idea and the organization form is not a traditional hierarchical organization, but we said, okay, it's a holacracy. Yeah? They arrive and they have to find out what happened. There's no top-down structure where everybody tells you what you have to do. So the first thing that Lucy has to do is to start a contest. So she has to solve several problems in order to prove that she is a really, really good employee of Ranergy and that she can stay there in the long run. And to make it interesting, uh, there's a second person, there's Jim, and they are kind of competitors. They don't, do not know whether they both make it or whether it is not possible, right? So this is the starting point. And then the first two episodes, they experience what happens in Berlin in the startup, the norms, the values become clear. And then uh, the international assignment starts. And uh, there's one assignment to Russia where certain things have to be solved. There's another one to uh, China where we deal with the Chinese culture. And uh, then uh, Lucy comes back and she has to reflect and uh, here uh, we want to get away a little bit from this national stereotyping we call that sophisticated stereotyping uh, but we want her to uh, have a very differentiated thinking about culture and of course the whole story has a major twist and uh, there's a big happy end i can tell you in episode six uh, and uh, yeah, then we decided to have a new game, episode seven and eight, which is more focused on OB issues, so on multicultural teams and on global and inclusive leadership. So this is the storyline. And then in addition to the storyline, as I said, we had quite a lot of learning content. So we wanted to map all of them within the story and we created insights. As I said, we have cultural exposure. So you're playing the game, you're in the world, you're working at Ranergy, you are in Russia, you're in China, but at the same time, you also have this cognitive learning, right? So you get to know the different concepts and uh, you have to apply them. There are things you have to do throughout the game as we have seen within the film. And then all the time we had in mind uh, the learning goals. Yeah? And of course, cognitive learning goals were important, learning about the concepts, effective learning goals, so really uh, immerse into the story. And this was really funny because some students at a certain point didn't speak anymore of Lucy, but they spoke about, and I did that, yeah? so they re-identified really with the story. Yeah, and then our major goal was, of course, also to address the behavioral uh, dimension uh, because this is uh, very important that students also learn how they can change behavior. 
So here we see again some of the pictures we had in the film. So these were, are really major elements. So learning, cognitive learning about uh, issues that are relevant in uh, intercultural management, like norms. Um, then the puzzles, which make it a little bit playful and where you have to do things, where you have to solve problems. Uh, then you have to take decisions. And this is also interesting. It's decisions with consequences. So for example, Lucy, and now I tell a little secret, right? Uh, she's discovered that there was insider training, trading in the company and Olga gave her two options. And Lucy could decide for, um, well, playing the game with Olga. Olga promised her advantages for her career or she could go to the CEO and tell that Olga is involved in insider training, trading and uh, depending on how Lucy decides the story would continu continue in a different way. So you experience in the game that your game really has, that your decisions really have consequences here. Um, what else? Applying knowledge explicitly. So if you read uh, on the bottom line, you see that uh, we ask questions about the organization form to make sure that the students reflect on the insights. And here they have to reflect, oh, it's really a holacracy here and not a hierarchical organization. Yeah, and then we have less explicit things uh, which you can just discover. So here Lucy is in virtual reality and there's an issue of social identity where she can apply social identity theory, thinking about in-group and out-group uh, situations. Um, and the last one is, of course, in order to keep uh, everybody engaged, uh, we always introduced uh, unexpected uh, events like, uh, for example, at a certain point you had to identify with another person when you were playing, which made it very difficult because you had to change perspective. But we did this deliberately because it's the experience of changing perspective, which is very useful in intercultural management. Right. So uh, these were the ideas. And uh, as I said before, uh, we looked at a lot of uh, cultural concepts. And uh, well, uh, what we all know, I think, is the national values research based on Hofstede, on GLOBE, and it's relevant. It's nothing against it. So, uh, and GLOBE is just doing the 2020 study. So we are very much looking forward to the results but it's national values and it does not account for diversity within nations or homogeneity between nations. And uh, this is why we looked at the value archetypes. We like this concept very much and we build it into the game. And uh, you can see it has received a lot of attention with a silver medal by GIPS in 2019 or a best paper nomination, which is related to that at AIB. So value archetypes uh, show us that you have heterogeneity within one culture and that you can also have homogeneity between cultures. So let's say the group of the expatriates, they might be more similar, although they are French or German or British, uh, than uh, the Germans or the French or the British themselves, right? So uh, they might build a homogeneous group across national borders. And this is what a value archetype would say. So we try to map that in uh, the game and uh, try to explain that to the students. Uh, then, of course, um, the norms, the lightness and looseness of norms, uh, which also have been already integrated in international HR research. And Elaine, you did a wonderful study on that. Uh, so this is an important point, which uh, leaves the national value level towards the norms level and where we can see where there are cultures which uh, are characterized by more lightness, uh, looseness or tightness, sorry, there's a typing error, uh, in terms of norms. So it, again, it gives us a different perspective, right? So, and uh, we also map that in the game.
And uh, well, another one which I like very much is polyculturalism. Polyculturalism, and then I stop with the concept. There are many more. Uh, polyculturalism I like very much because it shows that you partially and plurally engage in cultures. And uh, for example, if you imagine a French student, a French student can never completely uh, absorb the French culture, but only part of that. On the other hand side, this French student uh, might also be involved in yoga activities or uh, has stayed abroad. So polyculturalism means that you also absorb the influences of all of the other cultures you are uh, engaged with, right? So it's not only national culture, it's many different cultural levels that come into the game. Here. So this is how we mapped that. We put all of these concepts into the game. Here's a list of insights where you can see uh, what we did. It starts with well, values and then we have, have the whole concept of organization culture. Uh, of course, we have the globe mentions and uh, we have the polyculturalism situated dynamics framework. So uh, I would say a lot of very recent culture concepts which we put into the game but which we then translated into the story so that we have cognitive learning, uh, so classroom learning if you want, as well as experiential learning. So, and uh, now how can you integrate that for IHRM because we were very much on the cultural level so far, right? And why do we need culture to better understand international HRM? Well, I think there are a lot of uh, possibilities to integrate that. So you have the global work perspective and uh, we just have seen uh, the new book by Skudlerek and colleagues uh, on cross-cultural management and uh, which has a nice chapter on cross-cultural management management studies and uh, global mobility. And they talk a lot about uh, the cultural background of migrants, of refugees, of expatriates. So how does that matter for them? How does that matter for adaptation in a foreign country? And it really depends on, this is what they write, from which background do you come? Where do you go? And uh, how do you adapt to a certain culture? So this is one part where we integrated that in the game and uh, where this could be used. And then of course, every kind of intercultural collaboration and uh, also of inclusion and inclusiveness, right? Uh, if we look at the practices uh, for the HRM and the multinational enterprise, uh, well, all of this comes into uh, the topic of global standardization and local adaptation. And uh, you can see that in really all of the practices in recruitment and performance management. So two cultures come together. And here you can really, in a performance management role play, you can really nicely integrate two cultural backgrounds and then start with what what I call sophisticated stereotyping. So starting with national cultural values, but there might be something else to that. What about organization culture? What about other influences on the person? Uh, so you can nicely map that as well. Um, talent management, global rewards, a lot of opportunities. So in, the, in terms of didactics, how do we integrate that? Uh, well, we have the series game as a basis. Uh, then we have a very interactive blended format where we ask the students to um, work on the insights, to interpret the story of the game, to act out things, to do role plays related to the game. And uh, yeah, you can uh, integrate that in the lectures, in case studies, in uh, all sorts of teaching, right? And uh, the typical objective is understanding various cultural particularities and uh, really questioning uh, this sophisticated stereotyping. So I think I stop here. I hope I gave you a good uh, impression on what we did in the game, how did we design the game and uh, how we apply it ourselves for international HR teaching. Okay. Thank you, Marion. And um, I'm very glad that you showed all these uh, theoretical um, 
concepts that that have been um, developed quite recently. Actually, it's it, it's uh, there are a lot of concepts, theoretical and practical, that are used in the game. And uh, so, uh, my question would be: What were the reactions of the students? Did they like the game? Did, were they surprised? Yes. Uh, so first, they didn't know what to expect, and uh, some were critical. And then they played the game. And uh, as we moved forward, we really got nice feedback. And my favorite one is on Monday morning. I got an email from a student, and uh, she said, "I'm sick today, but I really would like to go. How the story is going on? How can we? How can I know that?" And at that time, uh, we were in the first phase of playing the game with the students, so they could only play it at their school so here at the Berlin campus and uh, now they can play it from home but I think this was a very nice feedback so I said okay this is what you wish Monday morning student cannot come and is sorry for that so very good uh, another reaction was uh, we did the game with executives and uh, one of the executives said well normally I don't play games on my computer, me neither by the way, uh, but I found it on the one side an interesting technical experience and on the other side she said well with all these powerpoints and things we see today I think the learning effect is different and she said I spent so much time with Lucy that uh, I will always remember what happened to Lucy and I will make the link to all of these intercultural insights so so she said, uh, probably it's one of the courses I may not forget so quickly, <laughs> right? Uh, so I thought this was also very positive uh, feedback. Overall, students uh, really acknowledge uh, the work we put into the game and enjoy playing the game. And uh, yeah, we saw that also when we asked them to evaluate the game. Yeah, thank you, Marion. It's very inspiring, <laughs> actually. Um, I mentioned your teaching award earlier, but for me, you are, first of all, the researcher, actually. And I know that, of course, you conducted a study investigating the impact of this game on students. So yeah. could you tell us what exactly did you study? What are the results? Uh, mm -hmm. just yeah. So, of course, we did not just do the game because we wanted to innovate and have a new teaching, um, a new way of teaching, but we also wanted to know, do we really reach our goals here? Yeah. So, uh, I explained this uh, the, uh, model at the beginning, how we put together the different elements and uh, so we uh, evaluated the game, we did a quantitative study, qualitative study, we are still going on collecting data because it's really interesting. And uh, the first study we did was just asking students before and uh, after the course and uh, to see whether their cultural intelligence really has increased because this was our goal, right? And uh, what we could see there was really a uh, difference between the cultural intelligence at the beginning and at the end and uh, not only overall but also uh, in all dimensions of cultural intelligence which means metacognitive, cognitive, motivational and also behavioral and to have a behavioral impact is quite rare so we were very happy to see that and uh, then what we also saw is when people really immerse into the story when they really identify with the characters they learn much more so uh, the degree of immersion obviously here is an important point and uh, we did a lot to have people immersed in the story so uh, in detail we had actors uh, who were speaking the dialogues we had music which was uh, created for the serious game you had some impressions so we think that the scenery is very nice and uh, so obviously immersion was was very high and uh, this as I said was related also to um, developing cultural intelligence. Uh, we then did a qualitative study because we wanted to know if we just ask students what have you learned and we let them write reflective essays right so uh, we said what, what have you learned and then we coded these essays and uh, according of course to our learning objectives right we wanted to see uh, what do they really think have they learned 
and uh, we saw that, uh, which we did not expect, that especially the metacognitive dimension seemed to be for them very important. Uh, we were a bit disappointed because they said the motivational uh, part was not that high. This is what we expected. We expected higher results on the motivational dimension of cultural intelligence. But uh, as I said, this was lower than we expected. And we asked the students, well, why? So we did interviews after that. And uh, they said, well, we already know so much. You know, you have to imagine the students that are studying at ESCP, they are already very international. So they said, in a way, you cannot increase my motivation. This is why I'm here. And uh, so we said, well, this is very interesting uh, because um, even these students, right, who come with a very international background, they could still increase their cultural intelligence. And well, if we cannot increase their motivation so much, uh, we can understand because there's already a lot they bring when they come here to ESCP because it's a specific way of learning. Yeah, so these would be some of the major results of the quantitative and qualitative material we have. We're still uh, collecting data with the students and uh, yeah, still have some ideas how to further develop that. But uh, for the first phase, I think we were very happy. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Marianne. And uh, I know that the publication process is too long, but still hope to read your papers very soon in yeah. quick journals. Okay. So uh, the question before my last question, what is your overall impression after having developed and introduced this serious game? Would you do it again? <laughs> Would I do it again? Well, uh, when did I start that? Uh, I was a lot involved in administrative functions at ESCP and in 2017 I stopped that and then I was wondering what can I really do? What would I like to do to contribute? And I had the idea to uh, do that, right? Because I was interested in doing something which really has an impact. We have the feeling it has an impact and it's also related to our inclusion research. Um, so uh, how can you create a more inclusive environment? Uh, so I would say definitely yes. Uh, so for me, it was something I was wishing to do. The student feedback is nice. Obviously, the results are nice. Uh, but what you also need to know, it keeps you busy for quite a long time and you need a really, really good team. You need a lot of colleagues who help you with that and Maral, you help us with the Russian culture, right? So that we do not make a mistake in mapping all these issues we have written there. And uh, yeah, you need a lot of friends, nice colleagues to, to overcome all of the obstacles you have on the way. And there's always something coming up. But at the end, I think we are very proud. It was a great experience. And uh, we are talking about innovations in teaching. Um, I think it's worthwhile uh, to engage in these teaching in innovations because the only way from my perspective we can move forward in these times of digitalization uh, and in meeting the students where they I would say unfortunately spend uh, a lot of their time which is with mobile uh, devices right uh, so yes the answer would be definitely yes <laughs> great and uh, the game is very inspiring actually so my last question because we are approaching also um, the end is is there any any possibility for HR scholars who are watching now um, to test the game or to yeah. use the game? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, of course, we are very proud uh, of the game and you may see that I'm very happy about it. So we are happy to share the experience of playing the game. So uh, we will share in the chat uh, the address it's on our homepage, and uh, so uh, we will share the address where you can access to the uh, get access to the game the first episode you can play like this if you want if you really like it if you want to play more we send you the link you can play it and hopefully enjoy it as we did when developing that okay. marion thank you very very much it was very interesting and inspiring and uh, we are all very proud of you at our school and uh, now Mila the floor is yours for the questions. Happy to take all them right. Mila. <laughs> all right well thank you so much uh, Marion and Moral. 
Uh, I am exactly, I'm scanning through the questions and a lot of them have to do with availability and cost and uh, whether people could actually use it in their teaching. I assume all of that information is on your, is on the website. So when people follow what we're going to post in chat, they will find all that. Yes, they, so I will put uh, the address in a minute in the chat and uh, then everybody can just click on that and uh, either contact us or start playing. But fine and we would like researchers and professors of course to play that to give us the feedback we would be very open to that uh, when you use it uh, for students there is a fee of course all right okay so there is a cost involved to using it but we can all try it and see what it actually yeah. is yeah so there was a question so there was a couple of questions that we sort of repeat so i will allow myself to ask them though uh, can it be modular so can you just play a piece of it or you have to play the whole thing um, uh, there are two pieces and you mm -hmm. have to play the whole uh, one thing and the other thing so because it's really a story which is across six episodes yeah and mm -hmm. uh, you, it would be like stopping a movie after uh, I don't know 60 minutes you wouldn't know the happy end so uh, <laughs> I'm glad to hear there's a happy end so that's, that's very encouraging yeah there is one so I, I cannot of course disclose because then it's not fun playing it anymore but uh, yes uh, so you have to do the six hours but independently from that uh, the second game moving tomorrow is on global teams and global leadership and uh, this is independent from the first one it's always better they built on each other it's the same characters um, so I would recommend doing first the first one and then the second one but uh, you can play it without having done the first one mm -hmm. Well, the, there was another question that had to do with level of education. So mm -hmm. uh, is that something designed uh, for people in, in the graduate education or can it play out well with undergrads? And another yeah. semi-related question to this is, uh, in your experience, does that work with people with international experience or even people without international experience can make use of the game? Yeah. Um, so as I said, it's not only about national culture values. So uh, you mm -hmm. can use it for both target groups. And we were even afraid that our groups, they are already so international. So would they really benefit? And we found that. Mm -hmm. So far, uh, it would be very interesting to find a test group which has less international experience than our students because we just don't know. Yeah. But my guess is, as we talk about organization culture, as we talk about perceptions, as we talk about communication, about uh, group dynamics, a lot of that uh, is also something you are concerned with when you're not in a very, very, very international environment. But uh, if you uh, just work with diverse people, and I think uh, this is more or less everywhere the case, right? Mm -hmm. So, but we would like to test it in such an environment. We don't have that here at ESCP uh, with respect to level. Um, we tested it with master students and with executive MBAs and uh, what I have to say we, we it's the same game but we always put it in a blended course and of course mm -hmm. you would do the blended part in a different way yeah so uh, for executives we all know that it's much more experience changing based on what they played and we were not sure whether they really like playing the game so they liked it but we asked them to play it beforehand so we wanted them to come with the game experience and then mm -hmm. build on that during the course uh, in the master the courses uh, we do this partly so partly they play at home partly they play at school we also had them play in teams and uh, this is maybe an uh, effect of the COVID-19 situation yeah. so we said where well, we put you into groups and you play the game together you discuss why do you take these decisions uh, as I said with Olga with the insider trade do you disclose that or not what are your reasons uh, so we experimented with different ways uh, as as I said, I don't have experience now with a bachelor, but I think it really depends on if you do it in a blended format, how do you design the blended format for the game mm -hmm. itself? I think everybody can play that, but then it's a question, how do you apply it? Do you apply it? Do you let them, let's say, work on the insights? To what extent do you um, integrate that in an international HR course, which of course requires you to have more knowledge on HR already? Yeah. <laughs> 
So uh, I think uh, the game itself works for various settings, but you have to see how you frame it. Right, yeah, and one of our latest questions here has to do with whether it might uh, work for another course, like international supply chain or international yeah. strategy, if you cover those pieces of intercultural um, uh, skills development and so forth. So it, it, you can modify the game to your needs is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, of course, we have done it a bit more with an international HR perspective, mm -hmm. but yes. we also designed modules where we said you apply all of this now for marketing, or you could also do it for supply chain management, mm -hmm. right? But uh, this would be in the blended part of the course then. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there was a few questions on the chat that had to do with uh, sort of the background of the character. So, uh, we have Lucy, that's the German, uh, and, you know, somebody asks, is this for American undergrads or, you know, can it work for them? Uh, so I, as I understand it, at this point, you only have one character. You're stuck with Lucy. I mean, I'm sure she's wonderful, mm -hmm. but at this point, you cannot change the parameters of where she comes from and where she can go. Um, I don't know whether I should disclose it, but I do it in this community. As I said, you change character. So you start with Lucy, and by the way, she's French working in Germany. Ah. Uh, but at a certain point, uh, you play another character, which you didn't like before for very much and the idea is change of perspective and mm -hmm. this other character has another nationality i don't <laughs> disclose everything now but don't tell this, us all yes <laughs> this should help you know to having this experience of changing perspective oh okay and at the end uh, before they were rather i would say competitors they didn't like each other so much and then as of a sudden you have to leave lucy and you have to play another character which uh, well uh, is this astonishing and uh, yeah so you have to change perspectives uh, so you play two characters and you have quite a lot of characters around you um, so in the second episode game uh, the scene is India and there you also have Americans mm -hmm. and you have Lucy again yeah so she does her career as I said it builds one or uh, one step by step um, but uh, yeah you have various characters and uh, sometimes you have to change perspective <laughs> all right well there was uh, I'll, uh, I have only maybe one more question on the game itself and then I have a couple of more general questions to you um, is that also something that you may consider uh, sort of producing a version of this that can be used for corporate training, you know, outside of university? Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, I would even say you can play the game also. I mean, we tested this with executive MBAs, which are at our school people who have an average of 10 years experience. So I think uh, you could also do it in the corporate environment. And then it all depends on how you package that, right? What do you do with that? You could also work on a specific organization culture or specific things or have a team building, multicultural multicultural team building based on the insights you get, right? Uh, so as I said, with the executive MBAs, it worked. And uh, it's just that we haven't done it in a customized training or something like that so far. But uh, it's definitely the goal to test that, but we haven't done it. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, your timing couldn't be more apt with uh, COVID-19 and uh, moving to online teaching. Uh, but uh, my question to you is, is that the future of IHRM teaching, uh, creating uh, digital innovations like this one? Um, well, I like very much classroom teaching, so I hope mm -hmm. it's not the future. But uh, on the other hand side, I think it could be a very interesting element and it cannot replace all our teaching and uh, probably we all don't want that. But I think it's a very timely element of teaching uh, to integrate that. And as I said, uh, the learning goals, yeah, the learning uh, pathways of having a kind of uh, virtual cultural exposure and 
one classroom teaching at the same time lead to quite good results. So uh, I think integrating them is fine. Um, I hope it's not the future of our teaching because I really like to uh, work with the students on what they have experienced during the serious game. And uh, also this is something we have not tested. So we uh, have not uh, tested a cohort which only played the serious game. Mm -hmm. We only yeah. had cohorts where we did the blended format, sometimes in a digital way due to COVID-19. Um, but uh, this is definitely something I would like to do because I, I'm convinced that it's a very, very good element of a blended course, but uh, standalone could be interesting, but then you need to trigger this more, uh, the reflection more with, um, let's say, essays or additional case studies or things like mm -hmm. that but honest yeah uh, yeah i said i wasn't going to ask more questions about the game but one just came up that i think is very interesting is it possible to space out the playing time throughout a semester uh, or does it have to be done all at once sort mm -hmm. of the playing of the game you can space no. it yeah, so it's six episodes and this is what we're doing. Yeah. So they play one episode and then in the blended format, we talk uh, about the issues and we have additional insight. They have to do case studies and uh, all these things, especially when we do it in an international aid our course, uh, we would ask them to apply that right uh, within the case study. So we usually do that, uh, that uh, we uh, cover the whole semester with that. Sometimes they are curious and they already play the rest, but uh, we don't mind. <laughs> so what was the most uh, challenging aspect of developing this and what was the most exciting aspect of developing this? And if, uh, if people were to, to entertain the idea of developing something in whatever area they work for, what are your think about these things list? Mm -hmm. So I start with the last one. Uh, so um, what was the best thing was the first class with the students mm -hmm. because we were just, okay, how will that work? Uh, and uh, to see the reaction. So this was really, I think, and, and it was positive. So it was the best experience. Uh, I think that on the way, we were sometimes very lucky because we had really, really good partners, but there are a lot of things that can fail. And mm -hmm. uh, we completely underestimated the amount of work uh, of writing the story, of writing the insights, of mapping it. You know, you write the dialogues. And uh, I was very lucky that, uh, especially Tobias, but also other uh, students could help me with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm because it's really, really a very, very, let's say, encompassing work. Yeah, so, and you have to know that. It's rewarding, but it's encompassing. How long did it take you to develop beginning to end? I don't know if you're at the end, but from the moment you conceptualize it and have the idea until the moment where you can actually do it in the classroom. What period of time are we talking about? Yeah, so we started in 2016 with the idea. We got the money in 2017. Money is important, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started one and a half years later uh, in, at the end of uh, 2018 to introduce that into our courses. So, uh, but the period, let's say, I would say between two, 2016 and 2018 was uh, dedicated to developing the game. Yeah, first mm -hmm. with ideas and then finding the money, finding the partners and uh, yeah, going there. All right. So uh, it's not for, the, for those weak at heart. You have to invest a considerable amount of uh, time and, and resources yeah. to do it. Yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. Well, we only have two more minutes left. So I um, wonder if you can just sort of give us a, um, you know, a piece of advice for those of us teaching international H HRM uh, today. And this, I, I, I'm sick of the phrase challenging time, uh, but in those challenging times, what, what, you know, if you could share your piece of advice is to succeed in the classroom teaching that, here's my recommendation. Other than try the game, I get that. 
Okay. Um, so my advice is always be as interactive as possible. Involve the students mm -hmm. and let them develop things. And uh, this uh, this interactive part, I think, is very, very, very important uh, to get students engaged. And uh, you don't need a game for that. You can do a lot of other things. And mm -hmm. uh, we are very lucky that uh, now there are many, um, let's say, exercises out there, right? Uh, so role plays, case studies, whatever. And uh, I wouldn't mind investing the time also as a teacher to work with practitioners on that, to develop my own material, but um, really engage the students. I don't know whether this is a secret. I think it's more yeah, <laughs> well understandable, but in terms of uh, didactics, uh, this is, I think, the key to success. Can you teach uh, international um, or culture and cross-cultural competence without exposure to culture? Yes, of course you can teach it. The question is, uh, what is your learning goal, right? Yeah. And uh, if we look into research and AMLE gives us a lot of insights, so you can even develop the behavioral dimension of cultural intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a nice study which shows that, for example, using role plays being interactive uh, can help for that. So, yeah, of course, you can uh, uh, teach international aid uh, with that. Well, I'm very optimistic after this. And if our comments were uh, any indication, people are very excited about trying this. So thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, I did note you said that we will post the link in the chat. Uh, and I believe that comes from your end. Uh, I don't think we have that link. So uh, mm -hmm. will you be posting it in the chat? And of yes. course, uh, everyone attending and listening, we will send an email after the event where we will include a link to the recording and we will also include the link to the game as well. So if you don't catch that, it will come to you. Uh, we will send you that in the next couple of days after we manage to get our recording organized. So uh, rest assured that you will have access to that even if you don't see it now. So okay. I'm sending it now. To Thank you, Marianne. Everybody, and in case you don't find it. There we go. I see it now. So if everybody that's still with us, if you go to your chat window, uh, she had just, uh, she had just uh, sent the link to this. Uh and please, we are still in the phase of trying everything, changing things, uh, not the whole game. But if you have feedback, uh, we would welcome that very much. We would be very interested. All right. Well, thank you so much, Marianne, for an exciting presentation. This really, uh, you know, gets my brain thinking about how we teach HR and what wonderful innovations can be made. So this is great. I cannot wait to, to play it. I, um, you know, I'm already thinking of being Lucy. Uh, so <laughs> I'm very excited and I hope others are as well. Um, it, we're now two minutes past our allotted time, so I won't keep you too much longer. I do want to uh, reiterate that this uh, talk was part of series. Um, we do have a recording of our first webinar that took place in June in which Dana Minbeva, Helen Ducieri, and Angelica Zimmerman discussed the relevance and the future of HRM during COVID pandemic. Uh, we also have a seminar, a webinar scheduled for October 15th when Alena Ledeneva Led Led from the University College London School of Slavonic and Eastern European Studies in the UK uh, we'll, give a, we'll give a talk on the invisible dimensions of human resource management in formal networks, institutions, and places in international context. Information about this will be distributed shortly. Uh, it will probably be the same time. So basically, we will see you in a month. Uh, and meanwhile, get in touch. Uh, we will uh, post uh, a link to this on uh, LinkedIn as well uh, and on the websites of the various schools. Uh, with that, I say uh, thank you to our presenters, uh, thank you to my colleagues involved in this, and uh, more than everything, thank you to all of our participants. Uh, we hope you found this as useful as we did. So, see you in a month, everyone. Thank you very much, Mila. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much to the participants also from my side. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.